Hello and welcome to another video in our series on the behaviorist model and applied behavior analysis in particular. I'm Tom McIntyre, Dr. Mac of BehaviorAdvisor.com. If we want to know why a youngster is displaying a behavior on a regular basis, we need to look at what happens before that action and what happens after it. What precedes the behavior is the trigger for it. The result of the action is what is maintaining it and keeping it going in that particular situation. As Skinner said long ago, 1953, all we need to know in order to describe and explain behavior is this. If an action is followed by something desirable, that action's more likely to occur in the future. And the actions that are followed by undesirable things to that person are less likely to occur. Bold, simplistic, profound. People decide to try out a new behavior or decide to continue on with a behavior because there seems to be a benefit to doing so. Showing that behavior brings a reward, something that is desirable to us. Now a staunch behaviorist would never use the term reward. They would use the term, that's right, reinforcement. We don't know whether something we think is a reward truly is unless the behavior increases in some dimension then we know that behavior has been reinforced. And there are two types of reinforcement as we see here, the rewards, the desirable things, and the removal of punishment. Ah, I show that behavior, the punishment goes away, it feels good not to be punished. I am reinforced. Yes, there are two types of reinforcement. They are, yes, you remember back to Psych 101 and positive reinforcement, which most of us can wrap our brains around. We understand that to be, we show a behavior, something we desire comes to us. And then there's negative reinforcement, which many people use the term, but they don't fully understand what it means. So what is negative reinforcement? It appears to be an oxymoron. Gee, we think of reinforcement as a wonderful thing. We think of negative as being an undesirable thing. What is negative reinforcement? If you say it's the same as punishment, you fail the course. One's action, the behavior you show, results in something awful, negative, or undesirable going away. Or our action, our behavior, keeps that undesirable, awful thing from ever happening. Yes, it feels good not to be punished. If we show a behavior and a punisher that's happening goes away, or if we show an action so that we never get punished, then that behavior is negatively reinforced. Feels good not to be punished. We've dodged the bullet, so to speak. Oh yes, back in 1999, many, many computer uh, technicians said that when midnight comes and it turns to the year 2000, because programmers hadn't put something into their the computer software, everything computerized was going to crash and we were going to go back to the Iron Age. Now, I'm the type who's kind of cautious about these things, a little bit wary about these things and tries to prepare for these sort of things. Maybe it goes back to my days in the Boy Scouts with a Be Prepared motto or my days in the Coast Guard with Semper Paratus, always prepared. 
So I went out and I bought every solar powered device, dried food, water purifier that you could possibly imagine. I was ready for Y2K. I was going to at least neutralize some of this negativity that would happen. My behavior would make this horrible thing, lack of technology and its, re and its results, go away. Okay, Y2K never came, but I'm prepared for Y3K. You get caught in a cold rain. What do you do? Because right now you're being punished. What action can you engage in that will make that punisher go away? Of course, pop up an umbrella. Hop under an awning. You know, it's raining out while you're inside the house. You walk out onto the porch. You see the punishment ahead of you, that cold rain. What do you do to prevent that from ever punishing you? Right, you put up the umbrella ahead of time. If you are caught in a punisher and you show an action to make it go away, or you show an action to keep that punishment from ever happening, you or your behavior is negatively reinforced. That fire truck comes rushing down the street, loud sirens blaring. It hurts your ears. What do you do to escape that loud noise punisher? Right, stick your fingers in your ear. No one you're going to be walking down that street a lot that's near that fire department and there's going to be a lot of uh, fire trucks rushing by. What could you do to prevent that loud siren from ever causing you some auditory pain? Oh, yeah, you could wear earplugs. The wearing of earplugs negatively reinforced. Why is it that some people drive the speed limit? Oh, is it because they enjoy driving 55? No, most people would probably want to go faster, so why do they drive 55? Oh, it's the fear of getting a ticket if they go faster. Going 55, that behavior, keeps something awful, getting a ticket, away. So then why do some people speed? Oh, due to the inconsistency of the administration of that punisher. They think they can get away with it. They think another behavior, exceeding 55, will bring reinforcement. I'll get there quicker. I won't have to be in the car as long. Because they think that the punisher will not affect them. Oh! You place some awful food in your mouth. How do you escape? Right, you find some socially acceptable way to exit it from your mouth. Into the napkin, lean over under the table, pretend you're coughing. But why do you swallow that same food at your boss's house when you're invited over for dinner? Oh, there's two punishers here. One is having to swallow this food, but there's a stronger punisher, the boss's displeasure in this situation. So swallowing the food, while we find it to be an awful thing, a punisher, at least it keeps away a worse, more powerful punisher. Swallowing behave, the swallowing of the awful food keeps something, a more powerful punisher, away. You get into your family car that your uh, your son, uh, your teenage son has tweaked and you put the key into the ignition, you turn it on and this blaring new music, near music comes out. What do you do? You are presently being punished. Right, you reach over and you turn off the radio. In fact, you know, you could prevent this punishment, this loud blaring near music, from ever affecting you. You put the key in the ignition, but first of all, before you turn it, 
Right, make sure the radio is off or turned down low. Negative reinforced. You ever been on a bad date? Or been around obnoxious people at a party? What excuse did you use to get out of that punishing situation? The uttering of that excuse, if it worked. Oh, I got an early day tomorrow. Or you have a you call your friend on the phone and say, give me a call back in a minute and tell me I got to get home real quick. If that excuse worked, that excuse brought escape from the punishment. It feels good. It is negatively reinforced because the negative thing went away. And when that person calls and says, hey, how about going out with me on another date? How would you avoid that punishing situation? If you do avoid it, that behavior is negatively reinforced. You are sitting in a session that is so mind-numbingly boring that you start to nod off. It's akin to watching a refrigerator defrost. Oh, and, and there's the reason. You are sitting in this terribly boring session. What do you do to get out of there? Oh, you get out of there. You just walk away. How do you avoid this punishment in the future? Oh, at the conference, I won't select a session that's given by that presenter. That's it for this segment, Positive and Negative Reinforcement. In the next segment of The Consequences, we'll look at the removal or the withholding of reinforcement, ignoring. <laughs>